Well, there was a laugh out loud moment this morning as Joe Biden made his presidential pitch on ABC's Good Morning America. Actually, there were several knee slappers, but I'm trying to restrain myself here. But check this out. The president has a motto, make America great again. Do you have one? Make America moral again. Make America return to the dignity. essence of who we are, the dignity of the country, the dignity of people, treating our people with dignity, and this god-awful deliberate division that's being taken to, in order to separate people to aggrandize his own power. Okay, I'm not sure why Dr. Jill had to keep interjecting, <laughs> interjecting there. Uh, Joe Biden is going to make us moral again? Now, is this the same Joe Biden who was driven out of the race for the presidency years ago amid charges of plagiarism? Or is this the same Catholic Joe who has evolved away from his core teaching of his faith? Remember, Joe was once pro-life and he even voted for partial birth abortion bans in 97 and 2003. But only when that ban was upheld in 2007 by the Supreme Court, well, Catholic Joe evolved a bit. What this court did, it took that decision and it set in a, put a Trojan horse in to, through actually dishonest reasoning, lay the groundwork for undoing Roe v. Wade. That's the danger of this decision. Not the specific procedure, but the, but the rationale offered to justify, I think, the next step they're going to try to take. While several bishops have denied Biden communion in their diocese, owing to his rabid abortion advocacy. I didn't even know that until today. And now he's lecturing us on morality? And what does Biden even mean by his morality? The dignity of the country, the dignity of people, treating our people with dignity, more respect and dignity than they did before. This is about restoring dignity, the dignity of work. Well, dignity? Let's face it. Biden, and he's, a, he's kind of a fun person. You say hi to him. I'm sure he's a nice guy. But at age 76, he's coming across as just kind of a rambling, doddering, less cool version of Obama. And we know how much dignity he believed those working class Americans deserved. Obama, I mean. You go into some of these small towns in, in, in Pennsylvania, a lot of, like a lot of small towns in the Midwest, and each successive administration has said that somehow these communities are going to regenerate, and they have not. So it's not surprising then that they get better and they cling to guns or religion or uh, antipathy toward people who aren't like them. But now we're supposed to believe that those bitter clingers are going to look to Ramblin' Joe to return their dignity? I don't know. I have a feeling that most Americans just don't look to the government to deliver their morality or their dignity. I think most people just want to be left alone to live their lives in peace and maybe have a few extra bucks in their pocket. The argument Biden's basically trying to make here is, I'm nicer than mean old Trump, so vote for me. I think you could call this the Mayor Pete effect. Biden saw Pete Buttigieg mouthing religious platitudes while advocating some pretty radical policies, and he probably thought, hey, I can literally do that better than he can. But the truth is, this is a candidate in a party in kind of a tough spot here. Politico reported this the other day, saying Dems sweat Trump's economy. We don't really have a robust national message right now. Oh, you think? And if you listen carefully, the 2020 Democrats aren't making the case that their ideas are going to grow the economy faster than Trump or lead to bigger wage increases or even lower unemployment numbers than Trump's numbers. Instead, they become the self-appointed, self-anointed leaders of a new liberal moral majority. We need to restore that moral fabric that is being ripped apart. I believe that this is a moral issue. I believe this is an issue, again, that is about, it's, it's a reflection of our values. I'm tired of sort of the moral amnesia we have. Well, speaking of moral amnesia, the Democrats have forgotten what they've shown America lately. After spending two years defaming President Trump, calling him a traitor, all the rest, Democrats are proven wrong in the Mueller report about collusion, and yet they refuse to even apologize. How is that moral? And on the issue of illegal immigration, come on, Democrats are lying to the American people about a full-blown crisis at our southern border. Pelosi and company aren't going to work with Trump on the issue just because of politics. How is that moral? 
Then on the state and local level, things aren't pretty either for Joe Biden's we're more moral than Trump party. We're all the morally superior Democrats calling for the resignation of Chicago prosecutor Kim Fox tonight, who allowed actor hate crime hoaxer artist Jesse Smollett to walk free. Or how about liberal Baltimore mayor Catherine Pugh on the brink of resignation tonight amid state and federal investigations of her financial dealings? Must have missed Joe's comments on her. And morality is just busting out all over at the Virginia State House, where the Democrats have a sitting governor and attorney general, both with blackface problems. Oh, and let's not forget Mr. Morality himself, the Democrat lieutenant governor, Justin Fairfax. Well, I'll let one of his accusers tell that story. I broke down into tears because I feel guilty. Why do you feel guilty? It happened to her after it happened to me, and had I had the strength or the courage to say something in 2000, maybe it never would have happened to her. It's hard to watch. But in the immediate aftermath of these stories, remember, some Democrats did urge the men to step aside. But do you notice how quiet it's gotten lately? If it had been a Republican or any Republican officials accused of similar offenses, Democrats would not have rested until those men were driven out of office. But clearly, the Democrats like Joe, bitter about Trump's roaring economy, they're desperate and they're clinging to their morality narrative. But there's another problem. They've also become the party of infanticide. It was Governor Ralph Northam, a pediatric neurologist, who, while not in blackface, explained the grisly process that he sought to expand under his state laws. If a mother is in labor, I can tell you exactly uh, what would happen. Um, the infant would be delivered. Uh, the infant would be kept comfortable. Uh, the infant would be resuscitated if, if that's what the uh, mother and the family desired. And then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother. Then days later, the New York Assembly passed a bill legalizing infanticide and decriminalizing late-term abortions. The reaction? The bill is passed. That, my friends, is a moral standing ovation. These people are the moral exemplars of the 21st century. Are you kidding me? Democrats ought to get off their moral high horses or they're going to get bucked right off. For it is immoral to condemn and judge a man who, like all of us, is flawed, but who gave up a really cushy life to fight hard every day for prosperity and security for all Americans. And he's done more for the cause of life than any president in my lifetime. And I work for Ronald Reagan. This record of Trump's is stunning, even with all the wrenches that the Democrats have tried to jam into his spokes. So pull the numerous planks out of your own eye, Joe, before you start condemning others as immoral for political gain. And that's the angle.